All right, good evening. It is time for our Wednesday evening Bible study. We want to welcome you in, whether you're watching there on Facebook or on the YouTube channel or you're listening on the telephone. We are thankful that you have tuned in with us tonight. Tonight's message from the Word of God is going to come from the book of Proverbs, chapter number 13. Proverbs, chapter number 13. We're going to read verse 13, uh, 14, and 15. The Bible says, Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life, to depart from the snares of death. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Let's pray. Father, we love you this evening. We ask for your blessing as we look at your word. We ask that you would give us this Bible principle, Lord, that you would help encourage us and mold us and make us into your image. Lord, we love you. We ask for your help. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as we get into this Bible message uh, tonight, I want you to think about this. You can look around the world and you can see, I mean, not just the world, but the church. You can look at unsaved people, saved people. It's all the same. You look around and, and you'll see that people are struggling in life. It, it seems like more people are struggling more than ever. It, in fact, even God's people are having a difficult time navigating through life, navigating through the decisions uh, of life and just having difficult times. That's why this message is entitled, Why Are Things So Difficult? I, as I talk to people and counsel with people and listen to other pastors of things that are going on in their churches and, and just as we look at the situation today, it almost seems like people are just asking that question. Why are things so difficult? What is going on? Why is all this happening? Is God not as powerful as he used to be? Is God not as loving and as helpful as he used to be? Uh, why, why is this happening? It, surely it, it's not my fault. Uh, it's somebody else's fault. Somebody did this, this, or this, and it's causing my hardship. Maybe the church has failed. Maybe the leadership has failed. Hey, certainly, I can guarantee you, it's got to be the pastor's fault, right? Uh, it, it's somebody else's fault. Why is all this stuff happening? Why are things so difficult? We might just be able to chalk it up to the fact that, well, this world's just getting more wicked and wicked every day. I guess this stuff's just going to happen. But, but friend, listen, God gives us a, a reason, an explanation of why things are so difficult. Now, I want you to not think about the difficulty in the world. I don't want you to think about the difficulty in the, in the community around us, in our culture, in our nation, the world turmoil, etc. I don't want you to think about that. I want you to look at your life tonight. I want you to look at your home. I want you to look at your personal problems, the personal battles that you fight with. I want you to look deep into your own heart. I want you to look at your mind and the things you struggle with and thinking and all of those things. And I want us to all, me at the top of the list, as I was studying this uh, this week, God spoke to my heart about this. And so God dealt with me and, and it, it does good for me. It's going to do good for you too, okay? So I want you to look at this. God's word is clear of where the problem is. Look at verse number 15. Good understanding giveth favor but the way of transgressors is hard. The Bible says that transgressors get trouble. The Bible is very clear. Disobedience to God's word brings hardship in our life. You see, the Bible says good understanding giveth favor. That word favor is like the word grace. It, it's mercy. It's uh, to, uh, to, to bless upon. Okay, to give favor to someone. So the Bible says good understanding brings favor. Where do we get understanding? We get it from the Word of God. Where do we get the understanding to know right and wrong? This word, understanding, uh, in our Bible, it, it means intelligence or discretion. 
It means to have biblical sense. Notice how I didn't say common sense because these days it's not so common. But biblical sense. That is, what is right and what is wrong? What has God declared as righteous and what has God declared as unrighteous? So he says, by, by knowing the word of God, and obeying the word of God, we have good understanding, which is going to cause me to make a good decision, which is going to bring favor. But if I do not understand, if I do not obey the word of God, the Bible says it brings uh, hard times or hardness in our life. This word hard, the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. You say, well, doesn't everybody have a hard time? Well, sure. Sure, hard, hard times can come to everybody uh, for many various reasons. But here's what I'm saying. We need to examine that it's not this. I, I want to make sure if there's something bad going on in my life, here's what I do. First and foremost, when something's not going right in my life, I ask God. I, I ask him to search me. And God, if there's any wicked thing in me, God, if I've sinned against you, please show me. Because I don't want to be the one causing my own demise. I don't want to be the one that's shooting myself in the foot, so to speak. I don't want to be the one who loads the gun for the enemy and says, here, now shoot me. So if I can control it, I'm going to. If I can uh, stop my sinning or correct something in my life, you better believe I want to do that first, right? And so that's what the Bible says here. Hard times. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. The word hard means difficult or rough. We would look at that word and we would say, boy, it's, it's, a, very, it's a very troublesome journey. It's a very hard journey. It's not going to be easy. It, it would be like crossing the desert. It, it's going to have hardships and the water and, and just the heat and the exhaustion. It's going to be a hard journey. It's also a picture, this word hard is a picture of, of hard, unplowed soil. It gives us the idea of a field that has not been plowed, ground that has not been tilled. And so you go to try to cast seed on that ground, the seed will not take to the ground. The ground won't take the seed. And therefore, fruit will not be produced. Fruit won't grow there. So the idea of this, God saying, the way of a transgressor, the way, that is your journey, your life, your day-to-day, -day, your week-to-week, -week is going to be hard. That means when we're transgressing against God, don't accept for the great flowers and the great fruit seeds of heaven to fall upon your life and start growing good things. Because God does not bless sin. And here's what God's saying. Our life will become a very hard and unplowed, untilled piece of ground that blessings and fruitfulness is not going to grow in. And my friend, the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. Good things aren't going to grow in a life that's sinning against God. And so listen, the lack of obedience produces difficult times. I think about this, uh, turn in your Bible to Galatians chapter number 6. Galatians chapter number 6, uh, we talk about the law of the harvest. There is a biblical principle that I want you to understand tonight, the law of the harvest. The Bible says in Galatians 6 and verse number 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that means whatever seed you plant in the ground, sowing is planting. Whatever you sow, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth of his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. If I plant an apple seed, I will get an apple. If I plant a tomato seed, I will get a tomato. Whatever I plant, that's what's going to grow. So if I'm planting things in my life throughout my day, throughout my week, throughout the months of my life, if I'm planting things from my flesh, that is, in my flesh, I'm, I'm sinning, I'm doing ungodly things. You may say, well, preacher, I did that last week. Yeah, well, it might not grow up until this week. Uh, you say, well, I, I did that five years ago, but it might not grow till this year. You, you see, in our lives, oftentimes we, we plant corrupt seeds and we just kind of go on like, well, that ain't going to grow. 
or because we don't, we don't see it right away because we do something and right away it doesn't grow up and right away I don't get punished for it. Oh, well, I guess that wasn't too bad. I guess I'm okay. Where in actuality, <laughs> we, all, we all know different seeds, different plants take longer to grow. Some you can plant and, and three, four weeks later, you'll start seeing something right away. Others germinate under the ground and, and you, you may never see them until it's time to pick them and plant them and harvest them like uh, t- uh, potatoes and peanuts and just different things that are under the ground. But my friend, listen, what's happening is something is growing. I heard a preacher say one time, too many Christians are sowing to the flesh and, and sowing corruption and they're praying for crop failure. They, they, they say, oh, well, well, I hope that don't happen. Well, I hope bad things don't happen in my life. Well, guess what? If we sow to the flesh, we're going to reap of the flesh. And that's what the Bible says, the law of the harvest. Let me read you just a couple more scriptures. You know, the Bible says in, in the book of Psalm, the book of Psalm 107, verse number 17, fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. In our text verse there, in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 21, the Bible says, evil pursueth sinners, but the righteous uh, good shall be repaid. Evil pursueth sinners. That means evil is running right behind, following close, tailgating you, evil and bad things are going to tailgate you. They're right behind you. And my friend, as soon as you sin and do something, it's like slamming the brakes and that evil is going to plow right into you. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter number two. Romans chapter number two. Here's a, a great thought that Paul was trying to get this church at Rome to understand the differences between uh, the, the Gentiles and the Jews and, and how that sin deals with all of us and how that the law can't take away sin, only Christ can take away sin, but, but just how evil deals with everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, we all have a sin problem to deal with and the problems that we're seeing in our nation and the problems we're seeing in our homes and the problems that we're seeing in our communities, my friend, I believe are because of this right here. Why is everything so difficult? It might just be that there's sin in the camp and that God can't bless it. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 2 and verse 6, Who will render to every man according to his deeds? So the Bible talks about God being the righteous judge, and he says God will render or give to every man according to his deeds. So now he's going to show two different people, the righteous and the unrighteous. To them who by patience continue in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, he says, eternal life. So when, when, we are, when we are patiently doing and seeking God and doing things right and being patient in our life, he says, man, there's eternal life there. But unto them that are contentious, that is, you're fighting against God, And do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. He says, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Did you see that? Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Here's what God says. If you are, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or Gentile. It doesn't matter if you're white, black, yellow, red, purple, or pink. Bless God, it doesn't matter if you uh, have been in church your whole life, or whether you just got saved a few months ago, and you're just starting this new life with Christ. He says it doesn't matter. He says if you are going to sow in your flesh and you're going to do that which is wrong the bible says tribulation and anguish is going to be upon every soul that doeth wrong you say why is this happening in our world why is this happening to me and my family it might just be my friend that there's sin in your camp and you've got to get rid of that see proverbs 13 verse 1 solomon was instructing his son to hear the instruction of the father Listen, our Heavenly Father has given us instruction in the Word of God. He gives us the truths of God's Word. You know, he, he, all He wants us to do, listen, friend, is read the Word and do what it says. By obeying God, blessings come. But, but, but by disobeying Him, 
horrible things come. And that's what's happened in our land. That's what's happened in our, in our cities and our churches is this sin. Sin is a problem. And, and it brings hardship in our lives. And you know what we got to do sometimes is just stop and just check ourselves. You know, just check ourselves. I've got to just stop and say, you know what, hey, maybe I did something wrong, you know. Maybe, maybe I've made the mistake. God doesn't make mistakes, friend. God doesn't make mistakes. And God isn't just going to be mean just to be mean. He wants to help us. But I'm going to tell you, listen, he can't help us if we're not willing to say, okay, I'm going to do what he's told me. That's like the doctor prescribing you medicine and saying, if you'll do this, it, it'll correct it. The medicine will help, but you need to do this, this, and this. Okay. And you just think, well, I'll just, I'll just do one of those things, one of the five things he told me. I'll just do one of them, and I'll be okay. No, we didn't follow the prescription of the doctor. But the great physician of our soul, the Bible says, has prescribed to us to do something right. You see, the law of the harvest. Why is all this happening to me? It might just be that we need to check ourselves and make sure that the fertile ground of our heart is tilled up and that we're receiving the things of God. Listen, we need to be receiving the things of God at church. You need to be receiving the things of God in your daily Bible reading. You need to be receiving the things of God, the good seeds of heaven in your prayer time. You need to be having a relationship with God. Listen, in our society today, most people are religious, but very few have a relationship with God. There's so many people today that, oh, yeah, I believe in church. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. Yep, yeah, I prayed. He's my Savior. And, and they say that on Sunday, but then Monday through Saturday, they live like hell and the devil. And they're out there sowing the seeds of unrighteousness. They're sinning. Whatever it is they're doing, you just list a whole big bunch of sins, whatever. They've got it in their mind. They've got it in their heart. They're not thinking about God. They're being selfish. They're, they're, they're committing sinful acts. And then they say, well, well, I want God to bless me. God, why aren't you blessing me? Well, again, again, because our, our ground's not right to receive the seed of God. And those blessings cannot come. And friend, I want you to know the Bible tells us the lack of obedience is going to produce difficult times in our life. The way of transgressors is hard. But I want you to see this. Look at what the Bible says here in verse number 13. Back in our text verse. In Proverbs chapter number 13, verse 13, Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. That word despiseth, he's talking about despising the word of God, despising the commandment of God, despising what God gives us. It means to disrespect God's word. It, the word means to hold in contempt. It means to view as insignificant. Uh, the idea is this, God gives us his word and we just take it as a, oh, well, that's just a good point of information. We look at God's word as just being a, 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 a piece of the puzzle instead of the whole puzzle. We look at God's word and the commandments he gives us saying, well, that's a good way to look at it. Now, now let me see what everybody else has to say. Or, or God says this, but let me see what the world says, and let me see what the modern church says, and let me, let me go ask this person over here what they have to say about it. We look at God's word as insignificant. You say, preacher, I would never do that. I believe the word of God. Then if we believe the word of God, we would live it and love it, and we would learn to do it in our daily lives. My friend, listen, you can't tell me you love the Word of God and respect the Word of God and do exactly the opposite of what it says. The word disrespect, the word holding contempt, the word insignificant, these all describe the person who's looking at the Word of God and saying, well, I know what it says, but this is what I'm going to do. And we try to reason it away. We try to make excuses for why we're not doing the right thing. And my friend, listen, in the court of heaven, there is no excuse for why we do not obey the word of God. 
There's no excuse in my personal life. There's no excuse in this church. There's no excuse in our country. My friend, listen, the way of a transgressor is hard. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And my friend, listen, this nation has forgotten God and, and it's being turned into hell. And that's what we're seeing out here in this world. We're seeing a bunch of problems and difficulties and, and people say, why is it so difficult? I'll tell you why it is because we've forgotten God we have disrespected his word and I'm talking about even God's people my friend this is the problem the Bible gives a contrast though but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded there's a reward there's good things you know I mean hey you be good and we'll go get ice cream you know hey just just do what's right and we'll we'll get you a treat afterwards I, hey, man, I, I like, uh, for me, that'd be like going up to York Street Treat and having me a, a mixed cone. Hey, man, I, chocolate, vanilla, ice cream cone. Man, that's some good stuff. Hey, hey, listen, a reward. God said, I'm going to reward you for doing good. He says, if we fear that word. Now, it means to have moral reverence and respect. It's the exact opposite of despising the word. It means that we love the word. We respect God's word and say, look, that is the way of life. God's word is life. His word is the words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words of life. And friend, listen, when we look at God's word as being the supreme authority in our lives, and we look at God's word as a necessary uh, everyday food, I need that bread of life every day. I need to be in my Bible every day. I need to be asking God, God, what do you want me to do? with what I've just read. I've taught my children. I've taught my children that they, when they wake up, they've got to spend some time with God. They've got to get in that Bible and read a little something. And I don't care if they read 10 chapters or one verse. I want them to spend time with God reading that book and asking God, what does this mean to me today? What shall I do with what I have read in that book? And my friend, I'm telling you, me at the top of the list, it changes how we live. It does, listen, it will make us perfect if we listen and obey. Not, do, do we always do that? No. No, I don't. I'll be honest. And I'm sure if you'd be honest, you don't either. But friend, listen, what happens is there's a consciousness of sin. And we say, you know what, man, i got to get in there. i got to do right. I want to do right. And that's what the Bible says here. Here that feareth the word. Not, not that it's perfect and never messes up. He says, but, but if we would just look at God's word and say, man, I want to do that. God, help me do that. He said, there's a reward that comes to us. But look at verse number 15 again. Good understanding giveth favor. When we, when we read that book and we understand what it's saying and we love that book and have a respect for the word of God, the Bible says right here, favor comes, blessing comes. God gives, God gives us help and favor, uh, you know, and, and takes care of us and, and blesses us with all kinds of blessings. Amen. Hey, listen, I love the blessings of God. God is so good to us. He rains down the blessings of God. I, I know I'm talking to some people who know what it is to get under the spout where the glory comes out. I'm talking about God being good to us, supplying all of our needs, taking care of us. Amen. Every now and again, uh, he gives us a, a blessing. Oh, he might give you a root beer snowball. Amen. He might give you old Mater sandwich. Hey, he might bless you with something. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, listen, the blessing of God uh, make me happier than a fat kid in a bag of chocolate. Amen. Hey, listen, the blessings of Almighty God will make us smile not only on the outside, but on the inside. And those blessings will keep us going when everything else is falling apart. My friend, I love you tonight. I love you and I'm asking you to just, just stop and look. Just stop and look. Is there something in my life that maybe God is not pleased with? Is there something in my life? And it is time for the church of Jesus Christ to get to the place where we say, Lord, I want, I want to get sin out of my life. Because I'm going to tell you what, it's not going to get out of our community. It's not going to get out of our uh, court systems. It's not going to get out of our nation until it gets out of the church. And we got to deal with sin personally before we can go proclaim that truth of God's word. And we got to work on that thing. And I'm encouraging you, just as God's convicted me in my heart, to, to, to get more serious with him 
about the things that we got to do. My friend, God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to say, Lord, is the problem me? Is there something in my life that you're not liking right now? And whatever God tells you, when you pray and say, God, I pray your Holy Spirit would show me what I need to fix. If you will just let God point it out and whatever it is, take care of that thing. I'm going to tell you, you'll see blessings come. You'll see them come immediately. And then they will continue to trickle on down in the months and years. And my friend, joy will come in your heart. That's what we're looking for. That's what we need. Let's pray tonight. Father, we love you. We ask for your blessing. We ask that you'd make us more like you. Lord, we ask that you would draw us into a closer walk with you. And I pray that all of us, uh, as your people, Lord, that we would uh, look deep down in our hearts and ask ourselves, are we transgressing? Am I transgressing? Is there anything that I'm doing that you're not pleased with? Father, help us. Lord, we want to live in the blessings. We want to live in the sunshine. Lord, we want to walk in the, in the green grass, in the good pasture. Lord, help us to do that which is right. Lord, convict us of sin. And Lord, help us to make it right. Lord, we love you. We need your strength. We can't do it on our own. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, I love you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. Be inviting folks to God's house. 8.30 is the, is the uh, early service, and then 10.30 is the next service, and then Sunday evening at 6 p.m., come back. Hey, listen, we're going to be in God's house, and uh, all this month we're going to do something on Sunday nights to kind of have a little fellowship, uh, so we'll let you know what that is coming up. But, hey, listen, be praying and be encouraging somebody in the Word of God. Have a great rest of your week. I love you. God bless you.